Well, Reserve Bank Deputy Governor Michelle Bullock has revealed inflation in Australia could reach as high as 8%. Previously, the bank was forecasting inflation to peak at 7 and 3 quarters percent. What I would say is that um, our forecasts for inflation are to peak at about 7 and 3 quarters, 8% towards the end, uh, early into next year. The Deputy Governor spoke at a Bloomberg event in Sydney today where she provided an update on the RBA's bond buying program, warning Australians the bank was likely to make large accounting losses for a number of years. The central bank flagged a $44 billion paper loss on its portfolio for the financial year 2022 as sharply rising bond yields erode the value of its assets. After the event, I caught up with Martin Wetton, Commonwealth Bank's Head of Fixed Income and FX Strategy. I'm joined here by Martin Wetton from Commonwealth Bank. Um, Martin, thanks for your time. What did you make of Michelle Bullock's speech? Is she preparing Australians for a huge deficit from the RBA? Yeah, it's the sort of thing that um, was probably not on the radar of many people uh, today. Uh, but clearly what this is, it's a softening up to, so that people understand that there's going to be a loss incurred by the RBA for what they, done, what they did with monetary policy and specifically bond buying, which was until only a couple of years ago something completely foreign to the Australian market. It's not a big deal because it's not actually a loss that anyone really incurs. There are other sides to it. But yes, getting out early on those sorts of issues is an important one, just so that people understand what it means. Yeah, the bank's financial report will come out next month and it's going to show a negative equity of $12.4 billion. So what does that actually mean? For the layperson, it sounds like they're a company that's trading insolvent, but that's not the way it works because they're a central bank and it doesn't work that way. What it means in terms of practicalities is actually nothing for the layperson to worry about, but it is going to be a headline that the central bank is trading in negative equity. Over time, it simply means that instead of paying dividends back to the government, they'll just retain their their earnings to claw back some of that over time. And was there a hint today from the Deputy Governor as to around when the bank may return to profit? Uh, it'll be over a number of years. I mean, they've got a couple of part, moving parts to it. One of them is the term funding facility. As that withdraws over the next two years or two and a half years, that will uh, reduce the amount that they have to pay out to the banks for their deposits. And that speeds up the value, valuation of their earnings on the, on the earnings side. On the capital side, Bonds mature at par, they mature at 100 cents in the dollar. They're holding them at a number that's well lower than that. As they mature, those bonds will actually give them a capital gain too. So that really takes place over the next four to five years. The Deputy Governor also said inflation could actually reach 7.75 to 8 per cent by the end of this year and maybe even next, early next year. That 8 per cent sounded new to me. It sounded new to me and I was wondering what that meant. It was then followed up by the statement that we have our new forecast out soon. So to my mind it does suggest that they still see upside risk in inflation. I guess what that means for policy rates is if they are not looking through that and the implications of, of uh, what we've seen so far, then it may mean that they're a little bit more hawkish on their talk over uh, the coming months. Yeah, does that almost suggest there is a potential chance for another 50 basis point interest rate hike next month? It, it, would, it would seem that way if they're lifting their forecast and not looking through it. So yes, I would say that is where the market risk will be and I think market pricing has been uh, looking at that accordingly for a while anyway. This week we've got a couple of cash rate decisions. We've got the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. What are your expectations for those two central banks? 75 from the Fed almost certainly. Uh, you know, the potential of 100, but unlikely at this stage. Market's priced a little over 75. Bank of England is somewhere between 50 and 75. I mean, the big risk that they have is energy prices are going through the roof. And uh, it's a real real whack into the UK economy, but they also know that as they lift their policy rates there, they're really slowing their economy quite sharply. Yeah, are we likely to see a big economic contraction next year in some places around the world? Depends on what the RBA decides to do, for, for us at least. Around the world, I think almost certainly. You know, you're, if, if the policy decision is at all costs to beat inflation, then you're going to have some slowdown next year because of the cost of both interest rates and what that means for the person paying back loans, but also just the cost of, of living is, is very high at a time when wages, yes, they're growing, but not fast enough to cover both of those. So contraction's likely next year. When do you think we're going to start to see the impact of rising interest rates in Australia on bringing down inflation? On bringing down inflation, um, 
it probably takes a little while. I think if you, if you take that part off and say, when are we going to see the impact? I think we're seeing it already in, in housing, uh, in consumption, in, uh, in confidence. They're already coming through. And there's been a, quite a lag in the way that the first hike through to actually it hitting bank accounts has taken place, something like three months. So very soon we're going to start to see a real slowing down in the demand side. And I think ultimately that will, that will impact inflation. So really early next year we'll see probably quite a bit of impact. What are the big risks you're hearing from your clients or what are they concerned about right now? For bond investors, it's simply holding bonds. I mean, they've been in a situation where inflation continues to rise, central banks continue to hike rates, and they don't want to be investing in, in securities that you know, look like they're going to have capital losses in the short term. If they're looking more medium term, they're saying, well, a recession is going to come, so we want to hold them, but every day that you're holding them, the accumulated losses are being significant. I think on the corporate side, what we've seen from, for really the best part of two years is many of the corporates have told us that uh, getting staff, retaining staff, pay and, uh, and the input costs have been really high and a real crush to their business. So you know, they're finding those, that situation very difficult. And what's the outlook like right now for the bond market? But, uh, it's going to stay really choppy, really volatile. There's clearly, and the RBA has, has talked about this for themselves, um, in the post-yield curve control period of October, November of last year, uh, they, they did a lot of damage to their credibility in the market, and I think it's going to take some time before global investors particularly allocate capital towards Australia. And the RBA review comes out in March next year. Is there anything you'd like to see changed at the Reserve Bank? I think transparency is the, is the most interesting thing uh, and the most important thing that they do. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean giving votes, uh, giving the details on who voted which way, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see that. Uh, I think a lot of people would like to see more understanding of the way their process works. Well, Martin Wedden from CBA, thanks for your time today. Pleasure.